Associative feature patterns let you pattern components and link them to other features and have the pattern automatically update if the feature changes. For instance, in this assembly, the wood screw was constrained to a hole in the pattern, so we can use an associative feature pattern to put screws in the remaining holes. If the hole pattern in the flange changes, the wood screws will update to match. By the way, when the hole pattern was created, there was obviously one hole that was the original. The pattern was then based on this original hole. The wood screw can be constrained to any hole in the pattern, not just the first instance of the hole. First, click the pattern icon and select the screw. Keep in mind you can select multiple components to pattern as well as assemblies or even other patterns. The associative tab is active by default and the only button is the feature pattern selector. The next step is to select the feature pattern. Click the feature pattern selector button and move the cursor over the flange. Only the features in a pattern will highlight. Note that the original hole in the pattern doesn't highlight. Click on one of the holes and name of the feature pattern is displayed in the field and the preview shows the screw is also placed in the original hole. I'll click OK to create the pattern. In the previous lesson, you saw how the flanges themselves were positioned using a circular component pattern. In the browser, you can see the circular pattern for the flanges is listed just above the associative wood screw pattern that I just created. The icon for the wood screws is a circular pattern because the feature pattern in the flange was circular. This makes sense because it indicates the type of pattern, but you can't tell whether this is an associative pattern or a regular circular pattern. I like to rename patterns so I can tell at a glance which components are in it. Let's take this example one step further. If I zoom out, you can see the other flanges in this assembly. I'd like to have wood screws on each of them, and I don't want to spend too much time doing this. Component patterns are time-dependent features. This simply means that the order in which they were created matters. Here, for instance, it would have been nice to include the wood screw pattern in the flange pattern. Of course, the problem with this is that the wood screw pattern did not exist when the circular pattern of flanges was created. Although you can move components above or below a pattern, you can't move a pattern past another pattern. One way to resolve the issue is to reuse the parameters from the flanges pattern in the new wood screws pattern. I click on the parameters button so you can see the assembly parameters. The flange pattern parameters are named flange quantity and flange angle, and the equation for the flange angle uses the flange quantity parameter. This equation automatically updates the flange angle when the flange quantity is changed. Next, I'll create a circular pattern of the associative wood screw pattern. I'll select the associative wood screw pattern in the browser, select the y-axis, and then use the flange parameters for the quantity and angle. I'll click OK to create the pattern. The new pattern is added to the browser, and the associative wood screw pattern are the elements. I want to test the patterns to make sure they update correctly. I'll open the parameters dialog and change the flange quantity to 4. When I click Done, the number of flanges, the angles, and the wood screws pattern.